And hello, my name is Rich Coleman. I'm the Public Safety Community Coordinator for Pittsfield Township's Department of Public Safety and a member of the Washington County Cyber Citizens Coalition. I will use the acronym WC4 as we introduce the concept of the work that has been started and its future endeavors that we seek your participation in. The coalition was started by our local Washington County's 7th District Commissioner, Kristen Judge, representing Pittsfield Township in 2009 with the first event held at Selena High School with special guests from iSafe and Homeland Security. The mission of the Cyber Citizens Coalition is to raise awareness and to provide county residents with the tools and resources to be good cyber citizens. Coalition members from local, state, and federal agencies involved in keeping residents and businesses safe online are involved. October 2010 kicks off the second annual National Cyber Security Awareness Month. We're excited to bring this annual awareness event to our community. And it's our hope that youth, teens, parents, seniors, business, faith communities, schools, and all interested community groups join this ongoing effort. Over the past year, the coalition has had guidance from the National Initiative for Cyber Education, NICE is the acronym, and its partners. Let me provide you with a summary of how NICE describes its national role. Cybersecurity has been identified as one of the most serious economic and national security challenges as we face as a nation. The National Initiative for Cybersecurity has established, was established to help face this challenge head on with a strategy to build Cyber Suave Nation members through training awareness, K through postgraduate education programs, and professional development for federal security professionals. Please go to the website at www.nist.gov for details on this national effort we've partnered with to launch this important website and coalition for the citizens of Washington County. The WC4 has been broken down into five working subgroups that community members will be asked to join and participate in. They are education, awareness, policy, law enforcement, and public and private partners. Let's look at why the WC4 is important. According to the 2009 Federal Trade Commission's report, the Consumer Sentinel, Michigan's total number of identity theft and fraud complaints totaled 33,906, and many of those reported crimes were committed over the internet. In 2008, the total was 31,168. Up this year, in its reporting for 2009 by 2,738. Our seniors and online shoppers are impacted by numerous scams over the internet and by telephone with offers of prizes, sweepstakes, and foreign money orders, foreign lottery sweepstakes, money orders, and counterfeit checks. Our youth are impacted by individuals posing as friends looking forward to causing harm, by our teens putting too much information out on social networks and not realizing the impact of what they put out on the internet will impact their future college goals and employment opportunities. Students should be aware of the laws that are broken with sex texting and sharing photos with others. In 2009, the Internet Crime Complaint Center reported a loss of 559 $0.7 million in e-commerce. In 2008, the report cited $256 million, the difference from the two years of 08 and 09, and it was an increase of $294.7 million. So when we look back on the early work of Mr. Leonard Kleinrock in 1961, who is known as the father of modern-day networking with underlying principles, of packet switching and laid the foundation for the ARPNET, then directed the first installation of what was, soon, what was soon to be called the Internet. The first email message was transmitted in October 1969, and this was the beginning of what we now call the Internet. Please Google the history 
of the internet for the rest of the amazing details on how October is so appropriately called National Cyber Security Awareness Month. We'd like to thank our local partners who have helped make this year's effort a success. Google, AT&T, Dell, Ann Arbor Chamber of Commerce, Washtenaw County Government, local court administrations, the Sheriff's Department, Washtenaw County School District, Pittsfield Township's Department of Public Safety, Stay Safe Online, Ann Arbor, Saline District Libraries, EMU, Thomas Cooley Law School, the Watt Program, B Side of Youth, Washtenaw Area Teens for Tomorrow, and the Washtenaw Council for Children and others. Let me introduce you to some of the members of the WC4 as they provide you with information about who they are, where they work, their role with the coalition, why it is important, and encouraging members of the community to join this effort. Please put our website in your favorites. You can find it at www.WashtenawCyberCoalition.net or .org. It is our goal to keep this site current and relevant for our community. We welcome your participation and your input. Let's meet the members of the WC4 Coalition. Thanks and we look forward to your input and participation. Good afternoon and welcome to this special edition of the Prevention Corner with Rich Coleman. And I'm here with Kristen Judge, our Washington County Commissioner, who has been just an incredible force for us for Washington County and internet safety. Kristen, thank you so much for all that you've done with this thank initiative. Uh, not only with being a Pittsfield Township resident, but we thank you for your service to the community. But this issue that we have been working with and this task force that has been launched over the last year and a half, we had our first event that was hosted at the Saline High School. And we had two representatives that came in from Homeland Security and from the Internet Safety Initiative nationwide with iSafe. From that perspective and where we started to where we are now, just a year or so later, with looking at the awareness model to where we are with now hosting our own initiative, how, how did, how have we built on this as we look at what the other community is doing, particularly the one that we're mirroring in San Diego, uh, but how the perception so far from the community members and the task force that we'll talk about, how has this been for you as far as when we started to where we are today? Well, the great thing is it's been so easy to get people to be involved. Most of the people that are involved have actually called me and asked if they could be a part of it when they found out about it. So there really was a need to bring everybody together that's working on internet safety and cyber citizenship in the community together. They wanted to work together. They wanted to find a bigger solution than just what each person was doing in their own neighborhood. So getting people to come together has been very easy. And we have a great group of about 45 people locally, and then we have other people from state and, and national groups that are part of our, our group. Yeah, and what's been amazing is you have shared with us this information from your travels abroad, attending national workshops, as well as working with some of the national partners and what they're looking at with Washington County mm -hmm. being one of those model communities really grabbing this and looking at ease citizenship mm -hmm. that we see so much in all of the information that's coming out and and for our parents and our business community we're looking at every sector to bring into the fold with the, yeah. this awareness campaign. And our seniors. Yes and, and the seniors and and as we prepare we have a, an event coming up in October that's going to be launched with a new website lot of great resources. Talk to us about this special event coming up in October. Well, the exciting thing is we're going to have two speakers now, uh, one from Google, uh, from their prevention department, uh, their national De prevention department, and one from the Federal Trade Commission, uh, who helps people with staying safe business-wise, personal, and for kids. So they're the federal government um, body, along with Department of Homeland Security, that really take an eye and keep an eye on people uh, online. So we're going to have two speakers. It's going to be on October 6th, Wednesday morning from 8 to 10. We'll have about 200 seats. We're hoping that people will come for breakfast, uh, learn about the importance of raising awareness in our community, and hopefully sign up to be on one of the five work groups that we've created. There's five work groups. One is law enforcement, one is policy, uh, one is public-private partnerships, one is education, and one is awareness. And any of our community members, based on 
where their interests might lie are available to and we encourage to come Absolutely. and be a part of this initiative. Absolutely. It, it truly is a grassroots organization uh, with people from all different areas that work on cyber citizenship and internet safety. So that could be a parent, it could be a teen, uh, a senior citizen. We have a gentleman from Chelsea Senior Center uh, who's involved in this. Really anyone who is concerned about this issue, and it touches all of us now, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. regardless of where we live, socioeconomic, it doesn't matter. Um, it touches all of us. The internet's a part of all of our lives. And you know, I think it was 14% of elementary school kids in America now have a cell phone. That's, ele that's under sixth grade. Under sixth 14%. Grade. So uh, you know, it's it's going to be a part of our life now. And I'm really proud that we're being used as a national model by the NICE uh, group, which is the National Initiative for Cyber Education. It is the president's program on cyber education for the country. And we're now a part of that group and working on tracks to uh, raise awareness and have a similar message nationwide. And there's a message coming out uh, through the National Cyber Security Alliance, who's one of our partners, um, coming out in October. And it's going to be a Smokey the Bear type message. And we are going to follow directly with that message so that we can start to create this national message so everyone will be hearing it and it'll just become a part of our lives like Smokey the Bear has. Mm -hmm. And we will have a website. Can you give us that website address? Yeah. It should go live October 1st, and it's www.WashtenawCyberCoalition. Okay, and we'll put that information yes. up on the screen Washtenaw as well. WashtenawCyberCoalition.org. We just changed our name, yes. so I have to, yes, <laughs> to think about that for a minute. <laughs> but yeah, um, we're very proud that Google has uh, sponsored our website, mm -hmm. so we were able to hire someone uh, locally that was able to put our website together, and we're trying to make it dynamic. Uh, one of the most important parts of it for me is victims' resources. Yes. We really need to help people after they've been a victim of a crime. Uh, we certainly want to help prevent the crimes first, get people aware, make sure they're taking care of themselves so they don't become a victim. But what I've heard from residents is if they become a victim, they don't know where to go. Right. And for certain crimes, you're going to call your federal government, some you're going to call your local police officers, uh, some you're going to call the attorney general, and we need to let people know what that that step, those steps are. Yeah, and one of the things, because we've done quite a few workshops on this as well with identity theft and fraud, uh, when you file that police report, when the FTC completed some of the regulations several years ago that you can go to any police department when you've been a victim of identity theft and fraud, you get that police report number and you can go to the FTC.gov website so that you can put that information in that will go to all three credit bureaus to make sure that your information is protected and that nothing can be opened without your explicit knowledge and authorization once you have been a victim of identity theft and fraud. And as we've been working with crime prevention person, you know, statewide as my role with the Crime Prevention Association of Michigan, um, and I've been sharing what we're doing here in Washington County, whether the personnel will encourage them because this has become such a big issue nationwide. Uh, with the impact of every possible avenue of scams that are occurring on Craigslist and uh, the grandparents' scam, uh, in addition to the online chatting concerns that we have with our children and our parents, but also grandparents and our seniors who are online, there is no sector of our community nope. that has not been impacted. And there's by no this sector leverage. of our community that isn't on our coalition, yes. which I'm very proud of. We have we have the judicial branch, we have the prosecutors, we have seniors, teens. You know, we're taking care of I think all of the branches of our community that are involved in this issue. And if there are any that we don't have yet, and we find out about it, there's always room. Yes. So absolutely. there's plenty of room. Absolutely. We're open door policy. We want to grow. And, uh, and let's talk about this from a personal perspective because both of us have children mm -hmm. and, and I have one in college and one in high school and, and from a personal perspective as a parent as you see this giant global issue that our children are exposed to, what has that meant for you to be involved with this? Not to frighten our children but to, as awareness and education which is so critical. Well, as the founder of the Cyber Citizenship Coalition, you wouldn't think that my son would be falling prey to scams on Xbox, but he has. And it just made it so real to me when he had people trying to scam him, and people trying to ask for his phone number, grown men from Ohio, that kind of thing. Luckily, he came to me because we have that conversation, Absolutely. but most kids don't go to their parents when they're uh, mm -hmm. uh, approached online. I think it was 54% or so, do never, never tell never a parent, tell parent, or maybe right. even 75%. I remember the sheriff had a quote about that. So, uh, you know, it's even happening in my house. You know, um, we all have to be aware 
and even no, no matter how aware you are, you still have to have some tools, you have to have open dialogue. Absolutely. It's a daily issue. Uh, we just need to be aware Absolutely. of who's, who's out there. And, and one of the things that we've done with a variety of workshops we've done in Pittsfield Township is to we'll also uh, work with our families to help educate about how to secure your wireless systems. Mm -hmm. Because if you leave your system open, anyone can use your IP address and your, your network to do just about anything. Yeah. And so there's, it's really important to make sure that you have it encrypted, that you have it password protected, so that no one can use your wireless and your internet system except you and your family. Right. And those are critical, critical things. And all, there is so much that we're going to be talking about and sharing. Uh, at the workshop, and it's the beginning of a long-term initiative it is. for our community with mm -hmm. education and awareness mm -hmm. and the website. We're so appreciative that Google has stepped up and mm -hmm. assisted us here at the local level yeah. to provide this resource. Mm -hmm. um, so, Krista, I really appreciate you having the, the, the foresight and grabbing this because it's such a giant issue for us all. It is, but I feel compelled to do it. I mean, yeah. feel like we, we really have to. Mm -hmm. and, and everyone at the table, I think, feels the same way. So I, I share the burden with a great group Absolutely. of people who <laughs> certainly don't take all the, all the burden because we have a lot of people who are working very hard on this and are very passionate about it. So I think the whole community is going to benefit and hopefully other communities. Uh, I presented this task force or our coalition idea to the Michigan Association of Counties at their annual conference and I hope to present what we're doing to the National Association of Counties so that we really can let other people know this is something your community can do. Once we have our website up, we can let people see that. And uh, I really want our website to become a resource for Washtenaw County residents. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We have some great thank interviews you. that are coming up uh, with other task force members and those who are part of our Cyber Citizens Coalition. Uh, and we're going to just be sharing just a great wealth of information and, and an ongoing basis. Thank you so much again great. for all of your efforts. Thank you, Rich. Stay tuned. Appreciate we've got it. more that we're going to be providing for you here at the special about the Internet Safety Task Force here in Washington County and an upcoming initiative on, in October. And now, let's introduce you to members of the Education Committee. Are you ready to do the a take here? Oh, hey! Hey there. How are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm really good. I am Mary Spence. I am a school psychologist for Ann Arbor Public Schools and part of the Washtenaw Cyber Citizen Security Task Force. We changed our name, so I think I got that a little messed up. Um, but I'm on the education uh, subgroup, sub-task force, and really excited to be a part of this larger initiative, even though it feels a little unwieldy, kind of like my two computers, but this is pretty much my daily life. So uh, technology is alive and well in Ann Arbor schools, but I also, as a psychologist, really feel um, a need to try and address some of the issues that um, we're seeing. And it's interesting because on one hand, um, the technology is really, really important to bring our learners and this generation and beyond into the 21st century as learners. Um, many of the jobs that exist today didn't exist 20 years ago, and probably in another five to 10 years, there'll be jobs that didn't exist now due to technology. So it, we feel a real dedication and commitment to helping our learners learn in how to manage the technology, how to utilize it, uh, how to make sure that it is really integrated into their learning uh, around things like critical thinking and those kinds of um, aspects of learning that are so important for young people to have a handle on before they leave K-12 education education. On the other hand, um, certainly recognize some of the dangers of technology, um, it concerns about how we make sure that people are not only safe, but they do learn how to critically analyze information as opposed to just go, okay, well, I'm going to cut and paste. I'm Google searching something. I'm going to cut and paste a bunch of stuff together and call that my paper. Um, and it happens. And part of it is because I believe that we're still very much in the embryonic stages of developing sort of the rules of engagement about how do we use this technology and just of course when you think you know when you've got it and you go okay this is how you do email and this would be the protocol about how you write email appropriately as a communication form then we got Twitter and we got Facebook and we got other things that take us to another level in terms of how does that work and indeed change the way 
we communicate, but also change what we communicate. Um, so I think those are really some of the key factors of why I'm involved in this work, along with my interest in helping um, learners who are challenged and children who are in special education. Technology has been a great boon. Um, the use of things like video um, to demonstrate things or video modeling, um, again, are very powerful tools. Um, I was just at a conference a couple of weeks ago where they're using blue technolo Bluetooth technology to provide the prompts to individuals who have autism to basically get through a job routine, which would have been unheard of, and we actually really couldn't have even found a way without having sort of a one-to-one -one Velcro to that person to get them through a job situation, and now that's possible. So very cool applications, but again, um, definitely something we need to look at. How do we develop ways that we make sure folks are safe, um, folks are learning, and people are finding ways to be able to critically engage in the information um, in a positive way. So thanks, Rich. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Jack Bidlack. I am the program director for the B side, or the business side of youth. And, <clears throat> excuse me, my role with the task force is um, very straightforward. I work with a lot of teens from the local area. So uh, we have a community-based program that works with young adults ages 13 to 20. So my role with the task force is mainly to get out there and uh, bring this information to them and help them get involved in um, educating and basically getting the word out into the community. Um, and also getting their feedback on how, um, how they think this program will impact them and how they can actually um, get the, the benefits from the program and also disseminate that to others. So um, that's kind of uh, what we do and, and who I work with. The, um, as far as why the task force is important to the community, uh, our program is housed out of the Academic Service Learning Office here at Eastern Michigan University. And what we do is uh, we work a community-based program uh, on entrepreneurship. And so my role and the importance for um, my involvement on the task, the task force is to get it out to the community in general um, and the youth that we work with, but also to the campus on Eastern Michigan, or the campus for Eastern Michigan University. Um, obviously, Eastern is a large uh, local organization. 20,000 plus students commute here or take classes here on a regular basis. And it's very important that they understand the security of the internet and their footprint that they're leaving out there in the internet um, and how they protect themselves and protect their friends and even family. So um, for us it's very important to be involved and to get that information out to the people that we work with and the organization that we're part of. Um, as far as uh, encouraging the community participation in this, uh, we'll be involved in the awareness factor. Uh, we could potentially even develop street teams with our youth and have them out there doing different functions or going to different schools and getting the word out there as far as why this is important and why the community should be involved um, to develop a citizenship, a cyber citizenship for proper behavior on the internet. Uh, how, how should you conduct yourself? And um, we could definitely get youth involved in that and make it a part of this community. Hi, I'm Marcia Dykstra and I'm the Program Director with the Washtenaw Area Council for Children and we are part of the Internet Safety Task Force. We uh, felt it was very important to become involved with the task force because we as an organization have been focusing on Internet safety for the past four or five years in our community. Um, we are the Child Abuse Prevention Agency for our county and we recognized how the internet has played into the safety of our children in our community and we wanted to address that. Um, we established uh, a peer-to-peer -peer education program for teenagers since it's teens and uh, preteens who do become more involved with the internet and um, need to be protected not only from outside threats but also in a way protected from themselves from w behaving unwisely on the internet and through our peer-to-peer -peer mentoring program we have been educating them about the dangers of the internet and how to also use it wisely. We feel that it's extremely important for our community to be aware of these dangers to young people. Um, we are working on working directly with the K 
kids themselves, but we're also working with their parents and educating them. This is the first generation of parents to parent using technology, and many are very intimidated by it and feel uncomfortable. So kids can get up to mischief more easily than they could uh, with other things. So it's important for us to educate parents and others about how technology plays such an important role in the lives of our young people. You can find out more information about our program, what we're doing in the schools, and we hope to be in all of the schools in Washtenaw County, all the high schools and middle schools in Washtenaw County by the end of this year. Um, you can find out about the program itself, but also the programs we're offering for parents and other interested others on our website, which is www.washtenawchildren.org. Hi. I'm Patrick Corbett. I'm a professor here at Cooley Law School's Ann Arbor campus. I want to talk to you today a little bit about the Washtenaw County Cyber Citizenship Coalition that I'm a part of. Several months ago, almost maybe all close to a year ago at this point, I got a call from Washtenaw County Commissioner Kristen Judge to be a part of this, and she contacted me to be a part of this coalition, primarily because of what I've done in the area of education on cyber awareness. I've done a lot of speaking in a lot of different schools, grade schools, high schools, colleges and other locations regarding the state laws in Michigan and how cyber crimes might be affecting all of us, kids as well as adults. There's a lot of awareness needs out there and that uh, was something that I felt compelled to address. And hence, uh, my, my role with the Cyber Citizenship Coalition and why Kristen Judge asked me to be a part of it. This is a great opportunity for our community. The Cyber Citizenship Coalition has got people from all different walks of life bringing their knowledge together. And I'm just one piece of the puzzle and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. On October 6th, we've got our kickoff event. I encourage you to be a part of it. We've got some great speakers and some great programs lined up. And then beyond October 6th, we're gonna be doing some more things, not only for the county of Washtenaw, but for the state of Michigan. Thanks for listening. Technology is important to our organization on many levels. We use it as a way to communicate with our students and our parents in the community with websites and blogs and email communications. Our teachers use technology in the classroom to deliver their instruction. And our students use technology to communicate with each other, gather research, and create projects and assignments. One unique thing in our school district is we provide Gmail accounts to all of our students in grades 4 through 12. We believe Gmail accounts are important because they represent what you would use in the real world. Our students use their Gmail accounts to uh, communicate with their teachers and peers. They also use them to collaborate on projects with other students within the district and outside of the district. And then there are, in our Gmail account, we have uh, productivity software that our students can actually create assignments and projects. Digital citizenship is very important in a school setting. We work every day with our students to teach them how to become purposeful and meaningful users of the technology that they use. I am so excited to be a part of the Washtenaw County Cyber Safety Coalition because it will give us resources at our fingertips. It will allow all of the agencies to come together and share the same language and message that means our students get the same message that our teachers get, that our community members get, that the law enforcement gets, that the businesses get. We are all speaking the same language, which I think is powerful when we're trying to be a cyber safe community. Also, our relationships at the national level provide us this extra set of resources that we all have at our fingertips to use every day. It just is a win-win situation. I'm fortunate enough to sit on the Washtenaw County Cyber Safety Task Force. Um, my area of specialty is education. I'm excited to uh, sit on that committee so we can develop education and awareness resources that can go right back into our school systems so we can build better digital citizens of our students. I also sit on the um, I also sit on the event steering committee who has, who has planned this wonderful event that you're partaking in today.
And now, let us introduce you to more of our committee members from the Awareness Committee. Hello, my name is Leslie Needhammer, and I'm the director at Saline District Library. I'm also a member of the Washtenaw County Internet Safety Task Force and will probably be sitting on the Education Forum. <clears throat> Here at the library, we have over 50 computers with full Internet access. However, in the, with the passage of the state law in the year 2000, the library board decided that all but four computers would have an Internet filter on them. So we have this space here with unfiltered computers and the rest of the library is filtered, including our wireless access. We take very seriously the uh, mandate to protect our citizens from pornography and, and that is the reason for our filtering software. We know the filtering software isn't without problems, but we try to monitor that. Uh, over the years, we have provided courses and classes on uh, internet safety, and we're looking forward to working with the task force so that we can work on securing the safety of all citizens in this county. Hello, my name is Tanya Robinson. I represent Washtenaw Area Teens for Tomorrow and Teen Center Without Walls. I am the uh, Community Outreach Coordinator. Um, we like to welcome any youth in the, into our organization and we like to put together youth council. And in this specific organization with the Internet Safety uh, Task Force, we like to welcome them into this organization to make them aware of the uh, dangerous technology. Um, whenever we have the kickoff event, we like to have them present at the kickoff event so that they can see and hear some of the um, real life stories because we believe that a lot of the youth um, make it more, you know, have, have more of an impact on them whenever they are able to see and hear the real life stories. Um, we like to put on different events for the, our youth, um, like Battles of the Bands, Teen Arts Festival, and um, we have resources there for them whenever we do this, like Neutral Zone and Ozone House. So we make any of these resources available for our youth in Washtenaw County, and we love to welcome to the um, Washtenaw County Internet Safety Task Force into our organization. My name is Josie Parker. I'm the director of the Ann Arbor District Library and a member of the Cyber Citizen Coalition in Washtenaw County being led by Kristen Judge. As part of that commission, I'm on the Awareness Committee. My interest in this commission stems from the 15 years I've spent as a public librarian working in libraries pr pretty much since the internet came up in libraries, helping the public navigate on the web. The access to information is a vital component of a democracy and public libraries are hubs to that for access in their communities. I'm standing inside the public library in the downtown of Ann Arbor in one of our computer labs, one of five. In the past year, almost a quarter of a million different logins on our computers were conducted in these facilities. That is a huge number of people looking for access in a public place. I'm very pleased to be working with a group of people from justice and education, um, government and nonprofits in our community to help this community uh, maintain high level of access but maintain it in a way that's healthy and safe and productive for all our citizens. And now let me introduce you to members from the policy committee. Hello, my name is Kirk Tabby. I'm the chief judge of the 14A District Court, Washtenaw County, and I'm here today to talk to you about the Washtenaw County Cyber Citizenship Coalition and why it's important to our community. Uh, first of all, a little background. I'm part of this uh, committee uh, for uh, some of the background that I've had in uh, technology and in prosecutions. I was a prosecutor early on in my career and worked on the Michigan Computer Crime Task Force in 1990 and we went after hackers and we that was before there was a lot of other things out there but people were hacking they were mostly juveniles people under the age of 18 and they were uh, stealing information breaking into systems banks medical systems that is still happening today 
But what we're dealing with also is a number of other types of crimes that are with computers. And I rewrote Michigan's laws uh, to fight computer crime here in the state. And we have a number of uh, computer crime laws that can address all of these concerns, including the new things that are happening with people, uh, sexting and a number of things that the students are getting into. And it's, it's primarily young people that are now communicating uh, on the telephones, on the computer phones. Uh, really the telephone has gone by the wayside. It's really a portable communication device where you can communicate by texting. In fact, if you're under a certain age, it's probably all that you do is communicate by texting. Uh, and we want you to know why it's important that, that we're talking to you today. Texting is out on the airwaves. It stays out there. Um, there's been whole scandals and political figures brought down because of texting. It doesn't disappear. Same with voicemail, same with email. Once you put something out on the web, it never goes away. So if you're communicating with somebody and you're sending things out there, it doesn't get limited to just the person you're talking to. They can forward it to all kinds of people you had not intended to see it. This is a problem. Uh, for young people, they think, oh, I'm just sending, say, a, a picture of me partially naked to my boyfriend or my girlfriend, and I want them to see that. Well, guess what happens? It gets sent to a number of other people and it never gets retrieved. And it's out there for the rest of their lives. And if you want a, a career in a certain area, they're going to dig these pictures up on you and you're going to be hurting when that happens. So you have to think about consequences down the road. Uh, the sexting also implies other things. There's predators out there. There are people out there that wait for young people to get on there and talk to them. And now folks that are 14 and 15 and they're sending these pictures to their boyfriends and girlfriends, they get picked up by people all around the world. And then they extort money from them and threaten to use these pictures uh, and, and uh, embarrass them and make their lives very difficult. The internet is a wonderful tool for communication and for investigation and for research. Uh, and it's going to be here to stay. The problem that we need to realize is that there are many downsides to that. Uh, the communication must take place in an environment that's open. So when you are communicating electronically, you have to assume that anyone and everyone is going to see that. And you have to understand that communication is not private like you think it is. If there's something that's private and you want to keep it private, you go one-on-one -on -one with somebody personally. You don't go on the air, you don't take a film of it and send it across uh, the airwaves. No, you talk personally. And you just have to learn what these consequences are. Uh, we encourage you to communicate. We want you to do that. But be aware. Be aware of all the unintended problems. That's why we have this task force, to make you understand that there are a lot of things that go on that you're not thinking about when you text someone or call someone or send a picture of someone. Uh, a person who sends a sexting, for instance, the person who took the picture of themselves just committed a 20-year felony. The person who sent that to their boyfriend or girlfriend uh, is committing a distribution. That's another felony. The person who receives it and stores it on their, on their phone, innocently enough, is committing another felony. And plus, you're using a computer to do this, which is another felony. These are very serious charges. And the prosecutors can bring them. The evidence is there. But we understand that you don't know what you're doing when you're doing these things. You're not intending to commit these crimes. You're trying to just communicate with your friends. You're trying to uh, talk to them. You're trying to be a part of society in a new way. But this new way is a different way than it used to be before. And it carries a lot of danger zones, a lot of time bombs, a lot of issues that you don't understand. And so what we want to do is have you listen to what we put out. Look, go to the website. Look at the types of things that are out there. In October, we're showing you uh, a kickoff for all of the things that are going to occur. And what we want you to understand is we're here to help you. 
and it's not just for the young kids. It's for seniors. It's for people that um, use the computer and, and believe everything that's out there. Uh, somebody sends you a message, and, oh, it must be true because it's been sent to me. Well, that's not true. It's probably a scam, and they're going to take your money. So you have to really understand that this new media is a wonderful tool, but it's filled with lots of serious problems if you don't understand what you're doing. So we're here to educate, we're here to promote, we're here to be certain that you understand what it's about. And I thank you for your time and hope that uh, you enjoy the internet. See you in cyberspace. Hi, I'm Skip Lover, Program Coordinator of the Information Assurance Program here at Eastern Michigan University. We're involved with preparing students and or professionals for positions of trust within our cybersecurity arena. Right now we have about 279 undergraduates, probably 70 to 80 graduate students, and 29 PhD students that are involved in information assurance and cybersecurity. How does this impact you? Well, at Eastern Michigan University, we have joined the coalition of Washtenaw County. Uh, I want to call it the Cybercrime Task Force, but that's not it. We changed names. Cyber Citizens. Cyber, cyber citizens. And uh, what's your role in cyber citizenship? Well, from my perspective, here at the university, we've trained all the law enforcement investigators that investigate internet child pornography, identity theft, uh, other fraud crimes in our cybercrime school. And we also teach the computer forensics area, or the analyzation of digital evidence. Uh, we have graduates throughout the state working in law enforcement agencies. Uh, we have part of the ICAC task force trained uh, that does hunt predators uh, and travelers that come and prey on our children. And also at the federal level we have a number of students that are working now with the Department of Defense, the National Security Agency, the FBI, Homeland Security, etc. What can you do though to help this? One, you can monitor your child's activity while he's on the internet or she. You can be aware and talk to them about vulnerabilities uh, when they are online. Not everyone is a safe person to talk to. If you look at me, I'm a 64-year-old white-haired gray guy, or a gray-haired white guy, if you want to look at it that way. But my name is Missy and I'm 14. So if I'm online trying to develop a dialogue with a predator, you're really talking to Missy or you're really talking to me. You don't know, do you? So that's very important to look at. What information are you putting on your website, your Facebook? When uh, I bring my students in and they sit in the chair in front of me and say they want to get into cybersecurity, I ask them what their Facebook looks like, what they Twitter, what information can I get from those areas on them? And all of a sudden they realize that they have to have a life-changing event here and start cleaning it up or you're not going to get a job. I also ask my freshmen, you know, have you ever been arrested? A minor in possession ticket will get you bounced from a job in a position of trust. It's easier not to do it. Downloading music. It's a great pastime for a lot of students in the high school areas and middle school and even college. Uh, is that fraud and theft? Yes. Can you pass a polygraph? Questionable. So your actions while you're in high school will determine your future employment. Best advice, if you think it's wrong, it probably is, don't do it. Uh, or the other side of the law enforcement agency's judicial side will be talking to you. And usually you are defended in the court of law. The whole area of cybersecurity, network security, encryption, management of these systems changes every six months. We're preparing students for jobs right now that aren't created. Do you have a role in cybersecurity? If you think you do, you really do because it starts at home. It starts with you the next time you sit down on your laptop or your PDA or your cell phone. Here's a question for you. How many copies are made of that last text message you sent to your friend? Well, your ISP made a copy of it. The receiver's ISP made a copy of it. There's a copy on his cell phone. There's a copy on your cell phone. So there's four spots I can go and look 
and recover that evidence if I need to in a court case. You can never get rid of it once it's posted online. Look at it, tell your friends about it, and before you start sending questionable texts, would you want your mother or father to see this text message you just sent? And maybe that'll deter you next time. Let alone, who are you talking to? Can you see them? Or you only know them by their username? Something to think about. Because it's your future and cybersecurity rests with you. If you want more information, give me a call. I'm here at Eastern Michigan University. My email address is skip.lover at emish.edu. If you think you're ready for a career in cybersecurity, network security, digital investigations, hacking, we have a number of hacking students, and they do find jobs on offensive computer work, give me a call. Uh, we can find a spot. We've been fortunate we have articulation agreements with seven community colleges. We accept their transfer credits. For you high school students, we have articulation agreements with four high schools right now that have uh, programs of study in Cisco networking and information assurance. We accept those credits into college from a high school program. So give me a call and find out what schools they are and uh, we can go from there. The task force work has been phenomenal. A great group of people to work with. I'm on the policy committee that will develop policies for this user group and putting out information. If you have suggestions, email me or our representatives or the website that Richie's going to provide and uh, we can see if we can fit those into our overall global uh, perspective on this CyberWatch uh, initiative. I thank you and uh, it's been good talking with you. And now, let's introduce you to the law enforcement committee members. Hi, I'm Matt Hershberger. I'm Director of Public Safety for Pittsfield Charter Township Department of Public Safety. I am on the law enforcement subcommittee for the Washtenaw uh, County Coalition for Cybersecurity. The coalition is important for increasing uh, internet safety uh, awareness in our community to ensure children, families, and businesses remain safe while online. As a law enforcement officer, I have seen local budgets dwindle, thus causing a shortage of resources that causes gaps in our ability to provide effective internet safety services. It is therefore critical for everyone to do their part to ensure our families and community maintain a safe and positive online experience. In closing, I encourage all of you to participate in this important effort and to come to the Internet Safety and Awareness presentation on October 6th at Washtenaw Community College. Please help us keep our families and communities safe while online by increasing internet awareness. Thank you. My name is Derek Jackson. I'm the Director of Community Engagement with the Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office. Uh, and I'm one of the co-chairs for the Washtenaw County Internet Security Task Force. Um, and for me, why this is important is twofold. One, as a resident and someone who loves to use the internet all the time, uh, I just remember posting something on Facebook. I was going on vacation and I posted it. And five minutes later, I received a text message from one of our uh, deputies here at the office, kind of taking a picture through my back window. And what that really showed me was, yeah, the internet can be fun to, to relay messages, but also, more importantly, it can also relay messages to those who you don't want to know that you're gone. Um, from a law enforcement perspective, I mean, the reality of people being victimized on the in internet or information being stolen is a real, real threat. And so just getting information out to, out to residents is really, really important. So for us, I, I mean, I really would encourage people to get involved, to learn more about how to be safe, not to scare folks away from using the internet, but how to properly use the internet to, to stay safe. We hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and getting a chance to meet the members of the Washtenaw County Cyber Citizens Coalition, our WC4 initiative for residents here in Washtenaw County. Please put our website and put it in your favorites, access it on a regular basis, email us, let us know what you think of the website and how we could be of assistance to you. But most of all, use this information for your family, for your business, and for those who are interacting with others on the internet. My name is Rich Coleman. It's been my pleasure to be your host, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks so much for looking in.